we got the valve body in the machine. It's all set up, everything's up to temperature. We got the transmission fluid about 160 degrees. You know, the nice thing about keeping the, uh, one of the really nice things about this, this valve body machine is it's set up so it completely simulates the, a normal um, operating transmission. And what, one of the benefits is you can get the fluid hot and then when the fluid gets hot, it gets very thin and thin fluid hydraulically leaks. So, so this machine's all about pushing the worst case scenario on a valve body, checking the hydraulics, the electronics, any leaks, making your clutch back come up. And I'll show you kind of what that is. So what we have on the screen is these are basically, these simulate clutch backs. So you'll see none of them have pressure in them right now because the pump's not on, the valve body's not doing any work. I'm about to turn the pump on, and as I turn the pump on, you'll, and I'm gonna run it through our automated test sequence, which we have a different one for every valve body. This valve body we run, this is 68 RFE, this valve body will run at a predefined test sequence that we built that we'll later use to overlay these graphs to make sure this valve body is exactly like we spec'd it out, and it has no leaks. But one of the quick things you'll see is your underdrive clutch, your 2C clutch, your overdrive clutch, your 4C clutch, your low reverse clutch, reverse input. These are basically essentially clutch packs. It's going to show us the hydraulic integrity. And then these are the solenoids. So as I get this thing fired up, you will kind of see what happens here. So I'm going to set my pressure. So I get my pressure set. So I want to be about 250 PSI because that's what we run the, tr the transmissions at in the real, in the real time world. So we're going to go ahead and start our test loop. And what this is going to do, this is going to start running through the different test scenarios. So see these clutch packs oil up, you kind of see your first gear, second gear, third gear. Now this is happening pretty quick and the reason we have it happen pretty quick because I'm doing a data record of this. And once we, once we build the software so we have a good graph to run off of, a basic, uh, basically a good test scenario, then we're going to let the machine do its job because it essentially will come back and tell us something failed in the parameters because we set parameters and you know, the minimum and maximum. And the minimum and maximum of every single one of these clutch packs and every one of these solenoids that are turning on and off, if the valve body ever fails any of that, then it's going to set us an alarm essentially. It's going to tell us and we're going to be able to see that in the graph that I'm going to show you after we run this. And it kind of gives you an idea. So it, it is essentially, we do a lot of our homework up front to make sure that, that this is programmed properly. And we set all our high points and our minimum points. And, and I mean, we really push them. I mean, we're pushing this thing at 450 PSI right now, which is almost double the pressure that this transmission would ever see in service. The max pressure this transmission ever sees in service is uh, 250, 260 PSI, maybe 270. But we'll run them, you know, at 450 PSI just to make sure that if there's any gasket, any seal in these systems that are like going to fail over time, we'll push it to failure immediately as soon as this thing goes to the sequence. So this, we're in sixth gear now, locked up. You can kind of see you know, we got 250 PSI, 250 PSI. All of these clutch packs are doing, are, are doing really, really well as the solenoids energize and de-energize. You know, now we're back to neutral. So as we run through here, we're gonna run this for a few minutes and then it'll come up and it'll give us our table. This is basically what prints. Everything you were just watching with all the gauges, your underdrive, your low reverse, everything, the solenoids firing when you had gauges. The gauges are great to watch when you're initially running through the valve body, but this is what we really look at. And the reason we do this, because this is basically the data capture. This is essentially a data recording of exactly what happened to that valve body. If we're gonna blueprint every valve body, then every clutch application, apply rate, line pressure, everything there, we basically data record. And when we put it on a data recorder, that's basically what tells us how much we modulate, turn on a solenoid, what the reaction of the solenoid was, as oil goes through, fills up the accumulator, fills up the port, fills up the clutch pack, this is your fill rate. So you essentially see, I'll turn on my graph here and kind of give us an idea, that's our underdrive, our 2C, our overdrive. So each one of these are clutches. And then this guy in the corner here is our legend. So it shows you, for every one of these is a clutch pack. So you have a solenoid was called for, the oil followed it, and then the graph. So pretty much what we're looking for is making sure that the data trace across the board on every one of these 
is exactly what we're looking for and exactly what we wanted. You can see that's kind of where I turned it off, come back over here. This is more where we started. And this is a couple minutes worth of duration of every clutch pack, turn it on, turn it off, turn it on, turn it off, turn it off. So we run this through at three different pressure points. We start at low pressure and then we end up at about 400 PSI, which of course, you know, we would never run these trainings at 400 PSI, but the nice thing about running this last graph at 400 PSI, if there's a weak solenoid or a weak pintle valve or a bad gasket or a, or a bad casting or essentially anything that's gonna hydraulically leak, we'll see it here. And what we would see, we would see the solenoid turn on, but we would see a big leak in pressure. It wouldn't be matching our baseline because we have our main line and then we have our off pressure and our apply pack pressure. So this basically shows us exactly the integrity of the electronics in this valve body and the hydraulic stability of the valve body in a nice graph. Now, what's really neat about this machine is not only does it, does it automate the system so we build our test graph so we can make sure that every single valve body is right, but we get to compare it to a known perfect valve body. And then it helps us identify very quickly if we have a valve body that not necessarily works or doesn't work, but it tells us if this, this valve body is hydraulically perfect. And then once we run the graph and we compare them, we have a good, a good no-go or no-go. Then at that point, this valve body's ready. We print this graph. This graph goes into our data system so we know this valve body goes into the transmission that's gonna be dynoed. Then it goes out the door. By the way, um, we also print these graphs and we, we uh, essentially give you a dyno sheet with every valve body. So anytime you buy a valve body for your transmission and it comes in a nice box, you also get a dyno graph. So you actually get to see the blueprinted version of what this valve body, what your valve body did. See if you can get that from anybody in the industry. I don't think you'll find it. It's just another little added security that you're going to get exactly what you're wanting, what you're paid for, and it gives us nice security because we know that the, that the valve body and the transmission is actually perfect before you get it out of here. So this valve body now is gonna go onto the transmission, and then it's going to go into the dyno, and then once it gets on the dyno, this entire thing is basically just done again because the same basic software that we dyno test our valve bodies is what we use to dyno the transmissions. And then we have a doubled up valve body and the, and the gearbox, and then once the gearbox passes the dyno, then it goes out the door and we're good to go. So um, we're gonna step over the dyno here in a little bit. I'm gonna get this valve body out of here. It's kind of hot, so I'm gonna let it cool down just for a second. Um, of course, the you know, fluid, we heat it up pretty good just to make sure that fluid is thin, then it leaks. So we, we really do everything possible to try to get these things to leak. Um, so I'm gonna head over to the dyno here in just a little bit, and then we'll dyno this training.